professionals have standards. Be polite. Be efficient. Have a plan to kill everyone you meet. As always, thank you for the support on the channel with these guides. I may in the future use my own voice to explain things a little bit better, and also let me know down below whether I should do an in-depth ghost guide as OpenQ is live. Without further ado, here's the guide. Sigma's primary fire, Ligma balls. Makes Sigma fire two charges dealing 55 direct damage each, wielding a projectile speed of 50 meters per second, with a maximum range of 22 meters before implosion. There are three main pieces of tech to make your usage more efficient. Firstly, you can cancel your primary fire animation by using any of your abilities, including your melee. This may be useful to quickly half a tracer's health in close range, or to perform a quick 155 damage burst, which is done by using your arc first, then using your primary fire, then immediately using melee after. Secondly, the typical one-shot combo for 200 health point characters is to arc, then primary fire, then melee, dealing a total of 210 damage. Thirdly, there is a little bit of knockback with Sigma's primary fire. You can abuse this by using the knockback to elevate you to certain high grounds, as seen in Hanamura first point defense. For the fourth tip, you can utilize the slight knockback from Sigma's primary fire to gain kill credit for your teammates booping an enemy off the map, and to land your follow-up shots easier on more mobile targets, as they will be pulled towards the center of your primary fire slightly. In terms of general usage, you don't do much DPS as Sigma, however he is one of the best characters in the game for dueling enemies. In order to take advantage of this, abuse off angles in double shield to put stress on healers, rather than shooting at the opposing Orisa shield. I'll cover this concept later on, and why you want to be using Sigma as more of an off tank rather than a main tank. You also generally want to be aiming at the feet of your enemies to allow the orbs to bounce past shields, and to give it two opportunities to hit your enemies. Aim at the feet of the enemy. Imagine that you want to shoot them in the toe. If you miss her toe, then there's also a chance that they'll get hit by the orb when it bounces up off the ground. Hopefully you get what I'm saying. The idea is that you have two opportunities to actually land your primary fire, once as the orb is going down towards the ground, and then again when it bounces back up off the ground. Sigma's first ability, Super's Forehead. Your forehead is shaped like Sigma's shield? I don't think that's true. Well... <laughs> is a floating barrier in which Sigma deploys in a straight line, with the ability to retrieve the barrier at any time. The shield has 900 health, regenerates at 120 shield per second after being down for 2 seconds, and has a cooldown of 1 second after being recalled. Here's 10 tips which interweave tech and the usage of Sigma's shield. Firstly, make sure to shield when using your ultimate to prevent any incoming damage, or from you being stunned out of your flux. Secondly, angle your shield to block transcendence. Against Zen, use Experimental Bear to cut off transcendence healing by blocking its line of sight. Super simple, but super effective. Thirdly, use your shield to block off healing from the opposing supports in order to force them to reposition. Force out cooldowns such as healing orb, and to allow your tanks to push aggressively. This works best against Donna Zen, as they have no mobility. Fourthly, learn how to shield dance against mobile dive heroes. In order to do this successfully, just set your shield at a horizontal angle, then weave on either side of the shield. For the fifth tip, as Sigma is one of Ferra Mercy's strongest counters, you can shield against her barrage, essentially using barrage against herself. For the sixth tip, you can cancel your barrier whilst using your arc or grasp. This will be particularly useful with the latter ability, as you can efficiently rotate each cooldown in time. For the seventh tip, keep your shield to block important resources such as Arnonade, or in this case, Reinhardt's Shatter, as shown yet again by Octotroph in the same game. For the eighth tip, when playing Sigma as a main tank, make sure to only use your shield when the enemy comes into range, and to not block irrelevant spam damage. 450 HP kind of throw it out, but. It there's nothing really going on here, right? Actually, there's no one, no one even remotely behind you. Your 450 shield goes to zero. Now they're actually in range to hit someone. That's why your shield is breaking because you're playing it a little, a little bit like a Reinhardt would play. Even though you are now the main tank and you, you will have to do the primary guarding job, you have to be a little bit more mindful. For the ninth tip, try not to play close up to your shield as you may be playing too close to the enemy hence you can be punished by a May, and it's possible that you may not block any incoming damage hitting teammates. You're doing the thing again where you're actually way, way too close to your own shield. Throw your shield out back here, you're still within effective range and you're still closer to running away. You're even running in front of your own shield. Other than that, basic shield management from the Reinhardt guide also applies here as well. Sigma's second ability, the suck. Makes Sigma absorb incoming damage to convert them into shields for 2 seconds. There is a maximum range of 3 meters, 
and 60% of damage absorbed is converted into temporary shields, decaying at 7 shields per second, alongside a lengthy cooldown of 10 seconds. Firstly, Kinetic Grasp can be cancelled by using Accretion. However, as the shields are gained at the end of the duration, no shields will be gained if Grasp is cancelled early. Secondly, if your reaction times are quick enough, you can absorb certain projectile ultimates, such as Grav, or Blizzard. In order to help you do this, Zeraz will often bubble forward on high charge to grab aggressively, and Maze will also do similar telegraphed movement. Thirdly, your Kinetic Grasp cannot be cancelled other than using Accretion, meaning that if the opposing Sigma is using his Grasp aggressively, rocking him is your priority. Conversely, waiting for the opposing Sigma to waste his Rock will allow you to more safely use your Kinetic Grasp. Fourthly, do not panic grasp in response to taking damage from characters who used a beam, such as Zeraya, Sim, Mei, or Winston. This may seem obvious at first, but many players in Diamond and Below fall victim to this. In order to minimize taking damage from these characters, utilizing your 22 meter maximum range will prevent these characters from coming close to you in the first place without putting themselves in danger. Other than that, you'll most likely be using kinetic grasp to absorb large amounts of burst damage in order to buy time for your shield to recharge, especially against Babs Matrix, and against a double shield bunker comp, in which Sigma is a very strong solo queue counter too. Sigma's third ability, Rock V2 makes Sigma fling a mass of debris towards an enemy, dealing 70 damage, and decreasing his movement speed by 75%. The projectile speed is 37.5 meters per second, taking 0.65 seconds to cast, alongside an area of effect of 2.5 meters, and will cast a stun of 0.8 seconds to any opponent who is directly hit by it. Sigma's Rock also has up to a 4 meter knockback if the ability lands directly onto an opponent, and in conjunction with the stun, Accretion is one of the most powerful stuns in the game. The cooldown is also a lengthy 10 seconds, likewise to his grasp. In terms of tech, there isn't anything I haven't mentioned prior to the Sigma's last two abilities and his primary fire, hence I'll quickly go over them again. Firstly, the cancelling Sigma's barrier with accretion, mainly used to save shield resource. Secondly, cancelling grasp with accretion. This is mainly used to quickly stun any ultimates, or utilize the 4 meter knockback. Lastly, cancelling Sigma's primary fire with accretion, only useful if the enemy is about to escape line of sight. Other than the two combos to kill a tracer or a normal 200 health point target, accretion is mainly used for its knockback and stun. For instance, use accretion to knock hit scan players off of high ground, which can either put them in a disadvantageous position, or force them to use their mobility cooldown, making them vulnerable to dive. Accretion can also be used to stun vital cooldowns and ultimates, which is best seen with Moira and Roadhog, as you can save accretion to stun Breather, Whole Hog and Coalescence, alongside other ultimates such as McCree's High Noon, or Reaper's Blossom. However, similar to Sigma's primary fire, you can also use the knockback from accretion to elevate you to high ground, just like Octotroph did in the same game mentioned prior. This is much easier to do than using his primary fire, although I would still recommend you practicing this in custom games. Sigma's ultimate, the slam dunk. Makes Sigma lift enemies in a 7 meter radius, lifting them in the sky for 50 damage, then slamming them back down for 50% of the max health. Sigma's movement speed increases to 7.15 meters per second, with a total cast time of 1.6 seconds, and a duration of 2.6 seconds when lifting the enemy. There's quite a lot of min-maxing with Sigma's flux, with one piece of tech that nobody, and I mean truly nobody, knows. The tech is essentially going underneath your enemy whilst mid-air during your flux, to make them land on your head instead of the ground. This may not sound like much, but this is primarily meant to counter Babs immortality field, as the vertical hitbox is simply not high enough. However, this can also prevent a well-timed Zeraya bubble, and Anana using her nade when she hits the ground. There is also little counterplay, as even Octotroph was impressed when this was done against him. He landed on his head! No, he did the tech. He actually did the 6 tech. I mean, this before, I just got fucking farmed. No, he, no, no, he purposely did that. Yeah, I know, but... No reason for it because we didn't have a bat There's nothing I could have done about it. <laughs> for reference, try and do this on defense, as you are much less likely to put yourself in an aggressive position, as the enemies are coming to you, rather than you going to them. Other than this almost unknown piece of tech, here's some general things to keep in mind about Flux. Firstly, use it as a repositioning tool. One of the great uses of Flux is basically as a repositioning tool, as we spoke about earlier with the May Blizzard. It's a great way to position yourself out of the Blizzard. 
Same kind of principle here, if you flux and then you actually try and maybe aggressively go onto this high ground, you can now basically contest the Genji and you can contest them and you can kind of make a very awkward uh, situation for them because it might not be very easy for them to deal with you. The second is to abuse artificial cover from your shield or to hide behind natural cover. Notice that after you flux, your shield is here and this is sort of sparse natural cover in this area. Instead, you kind of gravitate towards, well, basically the open ground. You can see here, if we look at this perspective, how actually exposed you are and how easy it would be for anyone to CC you out of your ultimate. The third is to use flux to kite away when running a double shield comp. How do you kite as double shield? Well, gravitic flux is one of those methods. If you lift people, they can't move, they can't come any closer to you. It buys your team time, it buys them space. It may kill people, at the very least it forces out cooldowns and ultimates. The fourth is to use flux to counter nano. By just by countering it, you will have made a huge play for your team. And it's actually not too difficult to do it to a Genji. All you really have to wait for is for him to use his first dash. It will take him at least a slash to kill someone. The fifth tip is to be aware of cooldowns that can stun your flux or decrease the damage taken. These can be Roadhog's Breather, Hook, Unner's Sleep Dart, or her Nade, and much more. You want to try and force out these important cooldowns before you flux, which is done by pressuring the target heavily. Keep in mind that the tech mentioned prior about landing enemies on your HUD may counter some of these abilities if the enemy try and time them for as soon as they land, which includes Unner's Nade, and Bap's Immortality Field. The sixth tip is to force out defensive ultimates from the enemy team to open up space for your win condition. Use Gravitic Flux to force defensive ults out of the enemy so that they can't counter your other ultimates. A good time to implement this tip is if your team has a Nanoblade ready, but the enemy Lucio has beat to counter it. You can Gravitic Flux to force out the beat, then your Genji can go all in with the Nanoblade without having to worry about being countered. The seventh tip is to simply get out of line of sight from the enemy snipers so that you don't die from a headshot. And the eighth and final tip is a little bit of target priority whilst you are in flux, and to prevent tunnel visioning onto tanks rather than squishy targets. You're a little bit over focused on the enemy Orisa. So you see, in fact, your first thought itself is just to go on the Orisa, even though you've lifted a Mei and an yeah. Ana. This actually, Ana's actually only lives because of the bubble from her Zarya, which could have potentially have been broken had you and maybe someone else been targeting it. The penultimate part of this guide is to do with positioning, which heavily relies upon your team comp. If you are running double shield with Orisa or Reinhardt, your job is to primarily play off angles to get damage and pass the shield. Utilizing high ground such as the gas station on Route 66 will help you find these angles. You should be thinking about, can I contest their healers? Can I contest their Genji? Can I stop sources of damage that isn't just this Orisa? But right now you're very, very tunneled on fighting this Orisa. Other than that, don't play too close to your shield or in brawl range, especially up against Mei, but to instead abuse your 22 meter range on your primary fire. Basic principles such as natural cover from the Reinhardt guide still apply. Now onto the final section of this video, tank synergies. Sigma and Reinhardt. This tank duo has the most amount of mathematical shielding. Although there is no direct synergy, a small tip would be to pin the opposing tank player when they are coming down from your Sigma's flux, and to shield at the start of your Reinhardt's pin. Sigma and Orisa. This duo provides a high level of versatile cover, with Sigma being able to utilize Orisa's halt by performing the halt plus accretion or halt plus flux combo. Use flux to kite away from danger in case you are being overrun by brawl or dive. Sigma and Winston. Whilst this duo has no direct synergy in terms of ultimates and abilities, you have good coverage of the high and low ground. However, perhaps Reinhardt is a better pick than Sigma in order to be more aggressive whenever your Winston dives in on the backline. Sigma and Roadhog. Similar to Winston, there is no direct synergy with Sigma, as you will be playing main tank. Try not to be overtly aggressive on the front line, as your Roadhog should be the one contesting cart or point mainly. And yep. even though you're a main tank, it, it's not necessary that you have to be the closest person to the payload. It may sound counterintuitive, but there are characters here who are better suited to being nearer the payload than you, namely your Hog and your Brick. Sigma and Wrecking Ball. This duo is essentially the upgraded version of Sigma Winston. Wrecking Ball's knockback pairs well with Sigma as he can easily punish anyone out of the position. And since Wrecking Ball will be tanking most of the enemy stuns, you can use your flux aggressively. One tip is to combo your flux Flux with Minefield to kill anyone who is caught in the Flux. Sigma and Zeraya. This duo is best suited against bunker style comps such as Orisa Hog, although do not run Sigma Zeraya against Dive. While both characters can dish out a high level of damage, there is no defensive capability, with a limited amount of cover, no access to high ground, and few stuns. Sigma and Diva. This is a more defensive version than Sigma Zeraya, with less frontline resources in exchange for extreme damage denial and high ground contest, alongside the ability to peel for your supports. However, the biggest counter would either be a double shield comp or a coordinated brawl comp, as there is either too much cover, or too little frontline capability respectively. Well that's it for the guide, if you enjoyed, don't forget to like, subscribe and comment. If this video also helped to raise your IQ, be sure to share it with your friends to also raise theirs. Until next time. You, big boy with a big broom, big boy how I come through, big boy with a brand new